Welcome back to part two of the 2023 preview of what's happening in the cosmos. I forgot to share my screen so that we could take a look at the 2023 12.01 a.m. January 1st chart. So let's go ahead and do that and see what we can discover from what the cosmos has presented to us via that chart. Here we go. Okay, so here we are. I am in Alameda, California, so I'm basing it off that longitude latitude. So 1201, January 1st, 2023. And I really enjoyed seeing the great goddess Ceres, the largest asteroid in the asteroid belt, rising in the east at three degrees Libra. And so with the seven degree, seven minute, 707, which I thought perfect for a seven year to have a seven degree rising at that moment. So that was an indication of we're on the right track. That Libra South node with Venus energy is going to be a key to unwinding the energy to make it more available, fresh and new, to have a new start with the North Node in Aries. And on the flip side, we see Chiron uh, descending into the West. So that was also very exciting to see that as well. Chiron on the Descendant, Ceres on the Ascendant. And then we had, this, of course, midnight, we'll have the sun at the base of the chart, rooting the energy of 10 degrees Chir or Capricorn into the, uh, the, the, the root chakra. And then we have eight degrees Cancer at the midheaven. So we see that that mother, maternal, great goddess energy is, of course, at the top of the skies during the winter season here in the northern hemisphere. And so we have that 808, 707 vibration. Okay, so Ceres is that great mother asteroid that caretakes everyone. And I think that that really speaks to the power of Saturn in Pisces when we look at it at its highest functioning frequency. It's like it's unconditional love. It's caretaking for all. Everyone has the opportunities. There is no... You know, when we get down into the denser layers of the 3D world and we have those that have and those that have not and those that have privilege and those that don't. And, you know, we see all that suffering happen. So uh, Ceres comes along and says, let's bring the energy up. We have cancer at the top of the chart. Let's give this great mother energy and the great mother nurtures all great and small. From the littlest tiny creature to the largest, you know, uh, groups of people. And, you know, it's available for all. Caretaking, love, nurturing, kindness, balance, harmony, uh, love is available for all. And what is healing is in the house of relationship is we get that chironic bridge that says, I want to heal these relationships by healing myself. And the, the energy that I bring into my one-to-one -one relationship needs to shift and change. And then we see that the Chiron 11 degrees is sending a yod formation or a, a queen cut 150 degree angle to the south node exact 11 degrees. So we're unwinding these, uh, not feeling safe uh, in the depths of our, our emotional bodies. Like there's a betrayal energy, there's a, um, you know, lack of intimacy, there's fear. So I find it very interesting that the South Node was rooting itself in the second house of values, other, you know, Scorpios, other people's resources. And we want to take our, our energy back and root it to for our own safety and security. And Chiron says, I will help you as long as you agree to heal your uh, spiritual self so that when you come into relationship, they are going to be more uh, godly in essence or spiritually based so that unconditional love can reign free and we have balance in the world. So that's one powerful indication right away that we're seeing from this chart. So because cancer is on the midheaven, we look to the moon, moon rules cancer, moon's ruling the midheaven, and we have a delicious waxing Taurus moon <laughs> with the North node. So this in the eighth house of the depths of our feelings. So the moon in the eighth house can be an intense experience, but the moon is exalted in Taurus. So let's bring that intensity with good energy. And this also indicates nurture and feed yourself, 
know uh, your boundaries and have healthy boundaries in regards to does this experience right here, right now, or this place, or these groups of people, are they nourishing my soul? And if you get a no, that is a good sign and indication that says, thank you, but I will pass. Or thank you for this time we shared together. It looks like we're growing in different directions. And I'm just going to step out because I want to not only free myself to have a different experience, I want to free you too to, to grow in the directions that you need to grow. So this is like a, a conscious uncoupling if you do find that there are situations or relationships in your life that are not feeding your soul in a positive, exalted way. And so the moon in Cancer with the North Node is saying that in order for you to have more, uh, you really have to ask that question. Is this particular relationship, experience, community uh, pattern, is it nourishing and feeding my soul in a positive way? And if the answer is no, don't be afraid to say uh, it's time for us to to grow our go our separate ways. And you know, you can still be friends, you can still be in contact, but you want to wish more for you and you want to wish more for the other person. And sometimes that means that you with each other aren't going to be able to do that. And then that you may need to go in different directions to find your nurturing or to nurture yourself. And there's always an opportunity, of course, because uh, Uranus is retrograde, there may be another opportunity to present itself when both parties are in a healthier place. So just know that that's part of this uh, energetic gift that we're being uh, presented with at the solar new year. So down here with the sun, we're rooting our sunshine into the root chakra, meaning like you are how we shine our light in the world is in a place of rebirth. Right? rebirth and we can see that with Chiron and Aries as well now the moon is with Vulcan the forger of rules in retrograde so it's coming back let's look to see uh family patterns are they showing up in our relationships that where we're allowing ourselves not to be nurtured by our most intimate relationships we want to look to our families uh to see you know are there patterns of dysfunction that are being passed down generationally uh we have Chiron or uh Mercury retrograde here as well with Pluto, Pluto conjunct Venus. So we can look to, uh, you know, these soul relationships, especially with siblings and the women in the family. And how are they being controlled by, you know, old patriarchal rules, things like that. But the Pluto Venus conjunction and also with the asteroid Lucifer. I use the asteroid Lucifer in uh, alignment with an evolutionary astrology lens. And don't be afraid of that asteroid. It's just basically an asteroid that shows where the weakness is. And so we have this triple conjunction with Venus and Pluto in Capricorn. So the weakness is showing itself and the female energy being controlled by the patriarchal, like old soul agreements that may be found in the family dynamics and structure, the way women and siblings or the children are being treated by old rules and they want to change. Vulcan says, I want to review these to see what needs to change. And I want to root the sun energy into the, the, into the uh, root chakra vibration so that it can heal you as the sun moves out if, as a more nurtured adult in the world. And so we're going to be looking at the past, past generations, maybe through the father's line, because that's Capricorn, looking at how women uh, you know, the soul vibration of the, uh, you know, are women being treated at a soul level or are they kind of these old patriarchal rules of old, just old stuff that wants to change, change because Lucifer is saying that that's a weakness that needs to, and rules need to change and how we you know raise our children within that environment needs to change. And so as you're healing your relationships and maybe even opening up to having an intimate relationship in 2023, you're going to want to look to your family dynamics to see what needs to be purged and cleared and changed. Because we do have a trine coming from this yummy, you know, waxing and Taurus moon with the North Node and Uranus. Uh, it is sending harmonic energy. And this is what's in review. This is where the weakness is, is in the family structure. And it looks to me like it's a, a generational because right? and as well as the souls who decide to incarnate together in the family structure. You're going to want to be looking at it as well 
look at those family dynamics that are out of sync with harmony and love and nurturing and kindness and you know and see like oh have the, is this a generational thing and then again take a second look and look at why did these particular souls incarnate together to work out these relationships venus being relationships venus ruling the ascendant and and Libra, and we're going into a nodal change this year, which is unwinding those relationships. And so you're going to want to start looking and asking questions around, okay, what are the soul agreements uh, of the souls incarnating in this particular family tree? What are we working out as rules that govern us in the material world for success or not success? Because that we have that weakness there. That, that was super interesting. And then this is going into a square with Chiron, which gives it fuel to make those changes. Uh, and, and it's going to come from a spiritual understanding of why these happen. And we also have Mars, ruler of Aries, into the Chironic vibration we saw in the first video about the North Node in uh, Aries coming. So Mars is sending a spiritual energy down into the sun as well. So uh, the Mars vibration, which is the masculine, it's in Gemini. It's with the part of fortune at nine degrees. So there's a completion energy around, uh, you know, Mars and Gemini is mental health of the masculine energy. We maybe can see that through siblings, relationships, want to look at those uh, relationships between brothers and sisters to see how they play out in the ability to have intimate, deep, lasting, long, beautiful relationships. I was on a Reddit thread uh, a couple of weeks ago and, you know, uh, people post their charts and say, you know, why can't I have a long lasting relationship? And, you know, I like to kind of peruse and, you know, if I see something in the chart and I could add something to the conversation that could help the person that posted, I will. I'll just say, well, it looks like it's, you know, these are your keys. Start looking there. Focus your, your, you know, your energy there to start unwinding it and then you'll, you'll can shift the vibration. And, um, so it was just really interesting to see, you know, these brother-sister relationships and how they show up and, or prevent us from having what we really desire there. So I want you to be cognizant of that as well. And what else can we see? So we have the South Node, I mean, the Black Moon Lilith at 29 degrees Cancer. She'll be moving into Leo for nine months in 2023. So leaving that nurturing energy, moving into creative Leo, uh, which is going to shift things. It's about, uh, in Leo, it could be about fear of change. So you want to be tuning into the heart chakra to and, and really getting courage to make the changes that you need to make, but from a soul's or heart-centered perspective. And that will bring in more creativity, more love, more romance. So I think that those are keys to this relationship vibration for people who are looking at uh, their relationship energy, or maybe even being coming more open to creating a relationship for themselves that meets that you know what they desire to have at a at a higher level of love, because we do have Saturn, which will be in Pisces soon, that wants unconditional love, because that's a healing force uh, on the planet, because we see the Pisces is ruling the sixth house of health and wellness, body, mind, spirit coming from the Piscean energy of love, forgiveness, neutrality, understanding what happens in life from, you know, a more universal perspective of, you know, do I know this person before? Is this pattern showing up in other areas of my life? Is it a repeat from past lives? Do I need a soul retrieval? Uh, how can I get access to information from the Akashic? And if you're wanting to learn something, remember, you can remember it from a soul place rather than learn it from a personality, human ego, separated self. There's no learning there's a lot of remembering happening in 2023 especially around the arts music painting drawing poetry writing um those are things you could tap into other aspects of you that were you developed those skills already and that's just remembering and accessing your soul's knowledge rather than thinking i gotta figure it out from my um, lower mind or the separated self which is that human ego okay so that's what I see so far in the uh, 2023 chart. I just wanted to add this video as part two because I did forget to share my screen. <laughs> so I hope that was useful for you. Again, uh, like, share, subscribe, so and be notified. Check, click the bell so that you know when more videos are being uploaded. There'll be a lot more action happening here in the Lunar Ladies uh, YouTube channel and more opportunities for you to join me in my new locals community. 
that will be happening at the end of July to celebrate the Lunar New Year, Year of the Rabbit. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.